The first thing I evaluate uh, on a PHS radiograph is the technique. First, I evaluate the degree of inspirium, and uh, for a well inspiratory film, I would like to see at least nine posterior ribs or six anterior ribs covered by the higher rated uh, right lung parenchyma. For example, here we see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and almost ten posterior ribs covered by the right lung parenchyma meaning that this film is well, good inspiratory effort. The next step that I evaluate is the degree of symmetry of the film. And for that, usually we should measure the distance between the medial ends of both clavicles and the spinous process of the upper thoracic vertebra. This uh, distance should be equal on both sides. Here, for example, it's a little bit smaller on the right than on the left, indicating minimal right uh, leftward rotation. The third thing I evaluate in the technique of the film is degree of penetration. An adequately penetrated film should demonstrate at least the first three to four spinous processes of the thoracic vertebra. For example, this is the first thoracic vertebra, so we see very well the first, second, third, and also the fourth spinous processes, meaning there is adequate penetration. If we see less spinous processes, it's underpenetrated. If we see more, it's overpenetrated. Also, then the last thing I evaluate in the technique is to assess for respiratory motion. Usually, I would look at the diaphragms, and I will try to see if I see sharp edges of the diaphragm, and also of the osso structures to see if there are sharp edges to indicate lack of respiratory motion. Next, uh, I evaluate the cardiomediastinal silhouette, the heart, and the mediastinum. I check about the position of the mediastinum and trachea to see that they are midline like they should be. Also, I uh, check uh, the cardiothoracic ratio, meaning I measure the, the maximal transverse diameter of the heart uh, and mediastinum in comparison to the maximal transverse diameter bony thorax and in an adult should be less than 50%. And then I evaluate the lung parenchyma. When I evaluate the lung parenchyma, usually what I would do first, I will assess the perihylar regions and I will try to see at the structure of the vessels if I see abnormal uh, masses or uh, lymphadenopathy. And then I will assess the sharpness and of the contours of the vessels uh, to assess for interstitial pulmonary edema. A normal uh, hilar vessels should be very sharp and well demarcated and also uh, I will try to look for a couple of pulmonary vessels and bronchi that are orthogonal. Uh, I mean they are crossing towards us or away from us and I would like to see that the vessels are well sharp, uh, have sharp contours and the bronchi are not thickened. Once we see that the fuzzy contours of the blood, uh, blood vessels and the bronchi wall are thickened, I would think about interstitial pulmonary edema. Next step in evaluation of the PHS, uh, PHS radiograph is evaluation of the lung parenchyma and I do it like uh, in a symmetric manner. I would compare and scan the lung parenchyma, each intercostal space with the contralateral one from uh, top to bottom. And any degree of asymmetry in the density will trigger a suspicion for a pulmonary pathology or other pathology that adds, uh, that can create such a thing. Here it looks normal. Last thing I will do, or almost last thing, is evaluation of the costophenic angles and the pleura in general. Here the costophenic angles, the latter costophenic angles are sharp. Then I go and validate the contours of the pleura, including the apical regions. And in the same uh, instance, I also, uh, opportunity, I will also evaluate for presence of pneumothorax. Last thing, but not least, I will evaluate the osseous structures and the soft tissues. I will value systematically all the bones, including clavicles, ribs, umeri, proximal umeri, and scapulae as well as the soft tissues, including the soft tissues of the lower neck, the chest wall, the anterior and lateral chest wall, 
and the upper abdomen for any pathology. Next thing I will go, I will evaluate the, the lateral chest radiograph. When evaluating the lateral uh, chest radiograph, I try to go by the same method, meaning I usually evaluate first heart and uh, the mediastinum. Normally the heart should occupy the lower third of the retrosternal space. Once I see that the heart occupies more than a third of the retrosternal space, I would suspect right ventricular enlargement. For assessment of left ventricular enlargement, I assess the posterior aspect of the cardiac silhouette and try to see any focal posterior bulging indicating left uh, ventricular or left atrial enlargement. In the mediastinum I assess this is the trachea at the level of the upper, mid and lower trachea and here at the level of the aortic arch should be the region of the carina. Then uh, in general uh, speaking we see the vascular structures of the right hilum and the left hilum. The right hilum is anterior, the left hilum is Posterior, normally these structures uh, should be well defined with well defined borders. Then I assess the aortic arch and the descending aorta as much as possible. And then I evaluate the lung parenchyma. Normally, in a normal lateral chest radiograph, in the anterior superior aspect of the film, in the retrosternal region, there should be good aeration of the lung parenchyma as well as in the posterior inferior aspect of the lateral chest radiograph and these regions should be well aerated. Also I assess normal presence of the what's called the more black sign. Normally the density of the thoracic vertebra should decrease gradually towards the base of the lung. Once we see an abnormal uh, increase in density of the thoracic vertebra it may indicate a pathology at that level ranging from pathology of the skin, pleura, lung parenchyma and mediastinum and we have to evaluate that once we see abnormal increased density over the thoracic vertebra. Then the last thing that I will do here is evaluation of the costophrenic angles. I'll try to characterize which is the right and the left. For example, in this case, this is the left hemidiaphragm and this is the costophrenic angle, uh, posterior costophrenic angle or recess which is sharp and normal and uh, this is the right which that is more continuous anteriorly and below the level of the gastric bubble and uh, this uh, it also sharp here. Then of course I evaluate the osseous structures and soft tissues. Here for example there are some mild degenerative changes in the middle or thoracic spine. I also evaluate the soft tissues of the chest wall and for example here are the breasts and the posterior back and neck as much as possible and upper abdomen.